Welcome to our lesson about working with dimensions in SOLIDWORKS 2011. We're going to be looking at basic dimensioning in this lesson. And for more video tutorials about SOLIDWORKS, please visit our website at video-tutorials.net. Let's begin by creating a part document. OK. Now let's insert a sketch on the top plane. Right-click on the top plane, Sketch. Let's activate the Line tool. I'll place my first point about here. Now notice the callout when I move my cursor. You can see that the tentative length of my line is currently about 21 millimeters. We also see an angular dimension now at 135 degrees, and that's measured from the horizontal axis. And the horizontal glyph appears. This means that if we left-click now, we'll have a horizontal line. And that's also indicated by the angular value of 180 degrees. If we left-click now to place our second point, we'd end up with a vertical line, as indicated by the glyph, as well as the 90-degree angle. By the way, the vertical direction is shown by the long arrow. The horizontal direction is shown by the shorter arrow here. OK, let's left-click to place the second point of my line. And now I've got a line about 50 millimeters long. Let's activate the Circle tool now. I'll place the center of my circle about here. And now I've got a circle with a radius of 20 millimeters. Basically, what I see here is a guideline regarding the size for the geometry I just created. Right-click and select to close the tool. Now let's create a three-point arc. Here's the first point. Second point determines the arc length at approximately 50 millimeters. And now I've got the angular and radius values displayed in my feedback. The angle of the arc is currently 180 degrees with the radius of about 26 millimeters. If I move my mouse upward, the angle of the arc will increase now to about 245 degrees, 250 degrees, with a radius of about 32 millimeters. Let's try a different type of arc. Let's try creating a concentric arc. That's the first arc type in the Property Manager. First point, there's the center point. The second point determines our radius value. And the third click determines the angle of the arc. Right now, the angle is 90 degrees. And let's left click to place our third point. Let's create a rectangle now. Here's my first point. And here's the x value at about 95, with the y value at about 94. If I try to create a square, I can do so. At some point, as I drag my mouse to position the second corner, when I get it right, a square glyph displays, indicating that x equals y in length. If I left click at that point, I will create a square, and equal relations will automatically be applied by SOLIDWORKS. Here's my equal relations, as well as my horizontal and vertical relations. OK, let's drag select everything in the graphic area and press delete on the keyboard. Now let's drop a rectangle. There's the second point. Right click and select to close the tool. If I grab any of the corners, I can move them freely. And as we see in the status bar, our sketch is underdefined. Let's begin by adding relations. I'm going to start with the origin point and this point and add a coincident relation. Now two of my lines are black. If I try to drag this corner, this vertex here that's black, you see that I'm not able to. However, I can drag the remaining three corners. Let's apply dimensions now. From this drop down menu, we'll select Smart Dimension. I'll select this line and drop my dimension about right here. The Dimension dialog window opens. We can enter values right in this box manually, let's say 50 millimeters, and then click Regenerate. We can also reverse the dimensions by clicking here. Notice now that the dimension has a negative value. We're able to use the spin dial to adjust the dimension as well, just by dragging. We can also adjust in preset increments using the up and down arrows. 
The increments are set right here. Now we've got 10 millimeter increments. Let's reduce that interval to 5. And now the dimensions adjust in 5 millimeter increments. The last option lets us mark dimensions that are imported into a drawing. OK, let's enter a value of 50 millimeters and accept. Right click and select to close the dimension tool. As you can see, we've got three black lines and one blue. If I grab this corner, I'm still able to resize the geometry. And if that wasn't enough of a warning, you'll see that in the status bar, we see that our sketch is still underdefined. At this point, I can add an equal relation, for example, between these two sides. And we'll end up with a square. Or I can apply dimensions also. Let's say 60 here and click OK. Now the sketch is fully defined as noted in the status bar and as indicated by the black line of our sketch. Let's exit the sketch. By the way, if you see a minus symbol next to the sketch name in the tree, it means that the sketch is underdefined. Notice right now we don't have the symbol. Let's right click on the sketch and edit it. Let's select and delete one of the dimensions. Now the sketch is underdefined as we see in the status bar. Let's exit. And in the tree next to our object is the minus symbol, indicating that this sketch is underdefined. Let's right click and edit, and let's apply dimensions. OK. Right click and select to close the tool. Now, a question what happens if I apply another dimension? Let me select a line. Let's say this line here, and I'll drop another dimension right about here. SolidWorks gives us two options. We can make this dimension driven or leave it driving. Let's take a moment to talk about the difference between these two terms. A driven dimension is basically a reference dimension. It doesn't control any geometry, but is controlled by the other dimensions. Let's OK and unselect everything. Notice that the driven dimension is in gray text. When I double click on it in an attempt to modify it, SolidWorks lets me know that this is a driven dimension and its value cannot be changed. Let's click OK. In this example, it's not very obvious why sometimes you do need a driven dimension. Let's try another example. Let me create, for example, a right triangle. Now let's apply dimensions. This leg will be 30 millimeters, and this one 40 millimeters. OK. Right click and select to close the tool. And I'm going to select this point and add a fix relation. Now the sketch is fully defined. But what if I want to monitor the length of the hypotenuse when I'm changing one of the sides, let's say? We could do this by applying a driven dimension. Let's select the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Notice as I move the mouse around, I toggle between vertical, horizontal, and aligned dimensions. If we right click while a dimension type is active, that dimension type will be locked. If you want to unlock, just right click again. This lets you move freely between the vertical, horizontal, and aligned dimension types. OK, let's position our dimension about here and let's make it driven. Let's change a dimension. Let's make the 40 millimeter leg 50 millimeters. OK. And we see how the length of the hypotenuse changes automatically. Let's select and delete our driven dimension. I'm going to press down the control key and hold down my middle mouse button or wheel. This lets me pan across the workspace. Let's apply another dimension now. And let's leave it as a driving dimension this time. Let's click OK. And the warning lights go off. Our sketch is now overdefined. Why this is a problem is because SolidWorks won't know which dimension to use in its calculations. We're going to need to fix this problem. Let's double click on the warning. And now we're taken into the sketch expert. This lets us diagnose the problem. Let's click on the diagnose button. Our results show five potential solutions. We can scroll through these one at a time by clicking these arrows until we find a solution we like. When you find one, you can click Accept to go with that one. 
or you can also repair the problem manually if that's easier for you. Let's click on distance 15 and let's delete it. SolidWorks lets us know that the problem is now resolved. We can also move the position of dimensions in the graphic area. We select the dimension and as you see two blue handles appear. Let me grab this handle and I'm going to attach it to this point. And let's create an example where this type of adjustment of dimensions would be useful. Let's drop a circle about here. Now let's apply a dimension. We'll select this point and the center point of the circle and let's just accept the default value, OK. Now let's grab this leg and reattach it right here. Right click and select. Next I'll select the center of the circle and apply a fix relation. And the circle appears in black line. Our sketch is fully defined. Let's take a look at one last example. I'm going to create a three point arc. Now let's dimension it. An arc has obviously a few different parameters to measure. Here's the length of the arc. If I want to dimension the length, I simply click on the length of the arc and then I can drag it out and position it wherever I need to. Now we're ready to exit the sketch. And this concludes our lesson about basic dimensioning in SolidWorks 2011. For more SolidWorks lessons, please visit our website at video-tutorials.net.